Four electric buses catch on fire overnight in Massachusetts. And now, Lion Electric is demanding I remove two videos from my YouTube channel. A significant incident occurred in Wilbraham, Massachusetts, where four electric school buses were engulfed in flames while parked at a depot. The buses were fully involved when the Wilbraham Fire Department arrived around 1.30 in the morning. Fortunately, no injuries were reported, but the fire did lead to delays for local schools as the buses were part of an active fleet. But there are some news outlets stating that these were new electric buses that weren't quite in service yet, so I'm not quite sure on the details there. The buses were manufactured by Bluebird and were in the process of charging at the time of the fire. Authorities stated they do not currently suspect foul play. However, the exact cause of the fire remains under investigation. I suspect this is an electrical issue. Electric bus makes sense, but it's either with the charging system or the high voltage batteries. One of the two initiated the fire. This fire likely started in a single bus, but once one bus is on fire, it's easy for those flames to spread quickly from vehicle to vehicle to vehicle. It's standard practice to park these vehicles in close quarters, often with minimal space between them. This setup maximizes the use of space, allowing for more buses to fit in one yard. For electric buses, it also makes sense because it also simplifies the installation of the charging infrastructure and helps to reduce cost. However, this practice comes with a significant risk in the event of a fire, as we saw in this incident, where the initial blaze quickly spread to the neighboring buses. Incidents like the one in Massachusetts aren't isolated. They highlight the very real challenges we face when it comes to electric vehicle safety. That brings me to an email I recently received from Lion Electric, a bus manufacturer. Weeks ago, I reported on a fire in Ontario that involved Lion Electric. Another one a month before that in Quebec. Today, I'm addressing an email I received from Lion Electric requesting I remove two of my videos about those two incidents. First, I want to clarify who I am and the perspective I bring to these discussions. I'm not just some guy watching from the outside speculating on these incidents. I have a background in the automotive industry where I spent six years researching, designing, and developing the battery box structures for electric vehicles. To do that, I needed a deep understanding of lithium ion batteries and their failure modes. In addition, I have nearly two decades of experience in the fire service. These combined experiences give me a unique, informed perspective on incidents involving electric vehicles, especially when it comes to the safety and fire response. Could I call myself an expert? Sure, but I honestly don't believe true experts exist. There's always more to learn. My goal in creating content for this channel is not to attack companies or spread misinformation, but to analyze incidents and highlight potential safety concerns for the benefit of the public and the first responders responding to these incidents. The videos in question are no exception. They're based in publicly available facts, discussions with industry experts, and my own personal expertise. On top of all that, these incidents specifically, I have confidential information from people on the ground close to these investigations. I'm confident that my audience understands that what I present here are my opinions, opinions that are shared to inform and raise awareness. Lion Electric's letter suggests that I have drawn baseless conclusions about these fires and claims that the high voltage battery was not the cause. They also don't believe that they have quality control issues. To address these points, it's pretty obvious that my videos are not definitive investigation reports. They are discussions that are combined with available evidence and professional insight. While I understand Lion Electric's concerns about reputation, safety issues, especially those involving school buses, should not be hidden behind NDAs or vague assurances. Transparency is key in maintaining public trust. Lion Electric has stated that their vehicles undergo rigorous testing and comply with regulatory standards. While this may be true on paper, the number of reported quality control issues well documented in news articles and feedback from individuals directly involved in repairing these buses, that tells a different story. If rigorous testing is being conducted, then it may be time to revisit those specifications and test plans to ensure that real world scenarios are being considered. I would like to invite Lion Electric to share the results of their investigations into these incidents publicly. I stand by my analysis of these fires, but if my opinion about the cause of these fires is incorrect, I'm more than willing to acknowledge that, provided that the investigative report is thorough and complete. Transparency and accountability in these situations serves everyone's interests, especially when it comes to public safety and confidence in electric vehicle technology. These incidents involve vehicles that transport children daily, which makes transparency and accountability non-negotiable. 
If Lion Electric is confident in their conclusions, then sharing their findings would only serve to clarify the situation and lay any doubts to rest. I'd be happy to present those findings here on this channel for my audience. At the end of the day, my mission is to educate and inform, especially when it comes to lithium-ion battery safety. Public discussions about safety are vital, and they help drive improvements across the industry. I believe these incidents highlight critical areas that deserve scrutiny, and I will not be removing my content. <coughs> However, I remain open to dialogue with Lion Electric and welcome the opportunity to present more information. But will they choose to share it?